This is Bill Jackson speaking. I'm the morning man here at WPTF and have been since May of this year. The program, using my initials, is called the BJ Show and embodies the usual morning music, weather reports, time signals, and chatter in a low-pressure, easy-going vein. The BJ Show is segmentized with a different type of pitch for each period. For instance, the 5 to 6 portion in the morning is aimed at the farm families in North and South Carolina and Virginia. This period has news, market reports, general farm information, and a bulletin board feature with announcements concerning church, school, and club meetings and functions. The music is varied with stress on hymns, march. Well, that was, uh, of course, Bill Jackson. And yes, Harriet, Harriet, you knew Bill. And the, the great Bill Jackson, uh, one of the most delightful people yeah. that I ever have known. And, uh, of course, he became a sports announcer, a well-known sports announcer. Mm-hmm. And uh, just a terrific guy. He and Wally also formed a great team, and it was... Just real tragic when that was broken. But sure Wally's was. good, too. He's gone along with oh, yeah. Grand Jackson. He's still doing the courses. Mm. I know he Wolfpack, is. I so. know he is. I saw him, oh, a couple of years ago now, I guess. Can okay, I mention phones now? We have some calls coming in at 860-9783, Donna Mason, you sweet thing, you. <laughs> she is something. She's probably, I hate to say this, probably the tallest woman in broadcasting, close to it. Okay. I mean... And Raleigh. I mean, Raleigh. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Narrow it down. That's right, right. I, I mean, just, I hope I get half the great interviews that Harriet yeah. has had. In fact, Harriet was telling us about Joan Crawford, uh-huh. was another one of the people you interviewed. Mm-hmm. And what can you tell us about uh, Joan? Well, Joan came here to open, I believe, the Pepsi-Cola plant. Oh. Anyway, she was their guest. And they had a news conference over in the hotel, the Sir Walter, and I was invited to go and was lucky to interview her. Had a grand time with her. We sort of uh, uh, understood each other from the beginning. And uh, she was good enough to write me a note about it and send me a book, her book. And some years later, my granddaughter was here and she said, Grandmother, Daddy said you used to have a radio show. What did you do? So I began telling him about people, Mrs. Roosevelt and so on. And she looked blankly. And then she said, did you ever interview any... Movie stars like uh, Joan Crawford, mm-hmm. and I said, oh, yes. And when I could show the Joan Crawford letter and the Joan Crawford book, then I rose in her estimation greatly. What a great Did piece her, of memorabilia. And I said Eddie Albert a while ago, and um, let me see, um, several others. I, I've just forgotten for the moment. Who I'm came. sure there were many. Well, there were but several others. But who came here for, for uh, opening shows, and um, it was fun. Fun to see them in person and to see that, after all, they're just people. One of the interesting ones I did was Minnie Pearl. Minnie Pearl. Uh-huh. Really? Uh-huh. Howdy! <laughs> Howdy! Right. And yeah. I always feel like saying how to yourself when she comes in. She was the niece of a friend of mine. It just happened uh, that, she, that this friend told me that Minnie Pearl was her niece. And so when she was here with a group that was at PTF at the time, the leader of that group asked me if I'd like to interview her by herself, and of course I did, so we had a wonderful time. Well, and my family said afterwards that they weren't sure whether Minnie Pearl made a hillbilly out of me or I made a lady out of her, but anyway. <laughs> well, maybe if you put in a good word for me, yeah. I can get a chance to interview her, too. Cool, maybe so. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's come. great. And in fact, uh, Donna Mason, uh, her show starts on April 25th. That's right. 10 to 11. We don't mention that several times if people well, get used to it. that's right, and we also want people to call in and tell us what they'd like to hear, exactly. too. Exactly. Yes, I'd like some, what some kind of things would you like to what hear? What do you want us to talk about? You know, right. what's, what's important to you? Job hunting, writing sure. resumes, career change, thing. things like that? We have two calls. Can we take one call and a break? Let's do that. We have two calls on the line here. Jerry, are you there? Yes, thank you. Go ahead. Yes, um, I'd like to uh, hopefully reminisce about uh, another uh, this staff member of the electronic media. I am originally from the Akron, Cleveland area, so uh-huh. I know you know of whom I speak. Donna's from Cleveland. Yes, uh, yes. Yes. Go ahead. I, I'm interested in what, if anything, we know about uh, Dorothy Fulltime. Oh well, I certainly remember Dorothy Fulltime. I'm not certain if Dorothy Fulltime is still living. However, she was um, a women's editor for a long time. I don't remember on what station. Was it 
was it a Channel 5 or something in was Cleveland? Was it WEWS, do you recall? Yes, I think that's correct. I think it was Channel 5. I'm not sure what she's doing now. I think she is still living. I think she suffered a, a stroke. But other than that, I tried to keep up with Dorothy last time I was in Cleveland and uh, really didn't get much information. Incidentally, Donna did some television in Cleveland, too. It was a long time yeah, ago, yeah. that's one, right. One of the wonderful things about her is that she was so incredibly candid. She yes. would really say what was on her mind. And I think that that's probably a virtue of um, women uh, in media, that uh, they, they have uh, the ability to, to do that in a way that, uh, well, they have a different perspective. Well, like Oprah Winfrey, for instance. Yeah, sure. yeah and there's, there seems perfect. to be compassion there, I think, when they uh, go for those meatier questions, that uh, you're not offended by them. Kind of like Barbara Walters. She's a digger. I mean, she really does dig and get very personal. And that's the way Dorothy Fuldheim was. Yeah, um, but uh, you, you, you actually never rubbed up against uh, Dorothy in any way. No, I'm right? sorry, I haven't. Uh -huh. I just remember watching her a long time in she, Cleveland. She'd been on for a long I remember her name, too. Now. Oh, well, I, I remember yeah. when she uh, would uh, bring me the news of the Korean War. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Flaming red hair. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and as the years went by, it's uh, as though she never changed. I mean, yeah. uh, she um, mm -hmm. was always uh, always had that twinkle in her eye, mm -hmm. which was the focus of your attention, and it never left her, regardless of what other physical characters. Well, we have Harriet, who also has a twinkle in That's her right. eye. Let me tell you, Jerry. And Thank I you. I think they were both in the same boat. Harriet I believe it. And Dorothy Fulltime were. Two in the same. No right. question. Jerry, thanks so Thank much. You. Okay, we're going to break here. Back with our phone calls, Bill. Hang on the line here. Harriet Presley with us, former WPTF radio personality and, of course, Donna Mason. She'll have our Donna Mason show coming up here April 25th on WPTF. Be right back. If you're in the market for an all-terrain vehicle, go with the winner. The Honda 4-Trax 250R has dominated every type of ATV competition. The Grand National Championship, the Baja 1000. Listen to some of its exciting features. Close ratio 6-speed offers a gear for nearly any situation. Revolutionary radial tires for outstanding traction and performance. For more information on the Honda 4-Trax 250R, stop by the Cycle Center Incorporated. 540 East Dixie Drive, Ashboro. Phone 919-629-2092. Coming to the State Fairgrounds in Raleigh this weekend, it's the All-American All-Terrain Vehicle Association's Grand National 1988 USA Championship. This Saturday, see the amateurs go at 10 a.m., the pros go head-to-head -head at 7 p.m., and this Sunday at 10 a.m., more amateur ATV racing. Tickets $8 available at the gate. For more information, call 919-342-4492. Don't miss the AATVA Grand Nationals at the State Fairgrounds this weekend. Sponsored in part by the Cycle Center in Asheboro. Southern Bell wants you to know that when you use a 976 service to find out valuable information, a charge will appear on your Southern Bell bill. 976 services use local phone numbers that begin with 976, and they're a great source of information. The services are offered by various companies, but the billing is handled through Southern Bell. So use 976 services. Just remember, you'll get a charge out of it. Southern Bell, a Bell South company. Mark your calendar for April 21st. It's the most important business appointment you can make. It's Small Business Expo 88, sponsored by the Greater Raleigh Chamber of Commerce. WPTF Radio's Mario Dell will broadcast live from the Raleigh Civic Center, where you'll discover new sources and resources for your company. Register for door prizes, including three nights at the Bahamas Princess Resort and Casino, featuring nonstop air via Braniff Airlines from Raleigh-Durham, brought to you by Princess Casino Vacations. Small Business Expo 88. April 21st at the Raleigh Civic Center. WPTF! Seeing discs is my principal activity at WPTF. My career in radio began in 1936. I've had at least one record program a day since that time. I began my current program on WPTF in 1947. It's titled My Best to You and uses the old Ison Jones song by that title as a theme. Since its beginning, the program has consistently drawn well over a thousand pieces of mail per month, a heavy percentage of that mail coming from colleges in the area. 
Well, I mean, there's another famous voice, former WPTF radio personality. It Who was that? It was. That was Jimmy Capps, Jimmy Capps. beloved by everybody. Mm-hmm. What a voice. Mm-hmm. And he had, his show was at night, yeah. ran into the night, and, of course, did draw in lots of mail. From Our best to, Our you. best to you. Right. Bill Hoke, did he take it after that? Was it Bill, uh, Tom? Yes. Yep. After that, yeah. He, and he attend, Tom Kearney is doing it now. Hooray! <laughs> Our best to you from Tom Kearney. We forgot, that's right. Jimmy Capps was the person that originated that. He really was. Uh-huh. Yeah. See, Harriet was on the air, if you're just tuning in, Harriet Presley for many years, from 1943 to 1960. She did a half-hour show from 1.30 to 2 in the afternoon daily. And then she did occasionally a show in the evening, if I'm not mistaken, Harriet. And that was that's another right. one, you know. Mm-hmm. Boy, what a busy lady. How did you have this? It was a problem probably lining up these people every day. Like, you know, it is, it's is—it's not an easy thing to do. Interesting people and stuff. Well, of course, whatever organization was having them, presenting them, always had newspaper news on it, you mm-hmm. know. And I would get wind of that. Or somebody else would call me. One time a friend called me and said, now, don't say anything about this. But Mrs. Woodrow Wilson mm-hmm. is going to be here. And she's going to be at Mr. Daniels. It was the second. Josephus Mrs. Daniels. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It was the second, Mrs. Wilson, of course, and said, I think she'd make a great interview. So I called Mr. Daniels, and he said, yes, I think she would do it. Let me speak to her and see. And she said, yes, she would. So we went out with our, all our trimmings to, to do it, you know, and got out there and got into the den, which was my favorite room in the Daniels house because it had so many wonderful, wonderful uh photographs of caricatures that the, had been of the Daniels when they were in Washington. And I saw a dark fur coat hanging on the back of the chair and a pocketbook. And I thought, okay, she's here. And in just a minute, Mr. Daniels said, I'm sorry, but she's left. And so I didn't get to interview Never her. Never had a chance. But, uh, yeah, but, but and I wasn't blind either. Mm-hmm. But anyway, she just didn't care to do it. But that mm-hmm. was interesting. Uh, to have that that contact, then later I did see her when she and Mrs. Roosevelt were both here for Mr. Daniel's funeral. Mm-hmm. I saw them standing on the outside, but um, she turned. She let me down. <laughs> Question: The most interesting interview that you have ever done. What would you say? Is there any particular one like Eleanor Roosevelt? You mentioned uh, uh, several people like Eddie, Eddie Elbert. I think was one of the big ones. Well, uh, they were so entirely different. They. I think the Mrs. Roosevelt, the first one that I did with, stands out in my mind as the most exciting one, because that was the first time I've, I'd ever been sent to do a remote, and it was real thrilling, you know, and we were all dressed up in our Sunday best, and uh, she had said she would do it. Mr. Daniel said, let me talk to, uh, let me talk to her, her secretary, and the secretary I got her to say yes. And I went in feeling, well, I must see her so I can put her at ease. I didn't have to put her at ease. She put me at ease. Is that right? Uh, Never a good-looking woman, as you know, Mm -hmm. but very kind eyes and very smart and very easy to talk with. And she had just been to Australia before that time um, on a mission for the president. Mm -hmm. And we talked a lot about that and some other places she had been in her life in general. And it was only about, oh... A month, I guess, before he died. He died. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And then I saw her again. She was at Chapel Hill, mm-hmm. and they brought her over to the studio that time. And then she was here for something else, and we all went out to do it, to do uh, interviews outside. And then the last one was I went to Fort Bragg, and the women down there uh, called and asked if I might come. So they were exciting and interesting, and and always something, something um, right hot news to ask her about. So I enjoyed her. Susie well, Sharp was another one I enjoyed. Sure. There were so many. Who stands out in your mind as the most difficult to interview? Did you ever have to pull teeth to get information from anybody? Yes. Or was the man who was president of Chicago, the University of Chicago, a young man, and I can't recall his name, but I thought if you don't get out of here but quickly. <laughs> Robert be Maynard dead? Hutchins. Robert Maynard, Maynard Hutchins. Is that right? Okay, mm-hmm. that's who it was. Was that the young one? Yeah. That's the one. He was the one. And what were you thinking through this interview? Well, I was just trying to get him to say something. And I said, <laughs> I said, you know, <laughs> we, we have met your father, who was at one of the colleges in Kentucky, said, we have met your father. And I thought that would uh, bring us back, but no. So I just dug hard. But I guess, as I think it over, one of the most difficult people I ever met and tried to handle was Frank Lloyd Wright. He was really? here the as architect. a guest of the of the college, um, uh-huh. and um, I was asked if I'd like to do an interview with him, and I said I would. So 
we went to a, just a general meeting, and each one asked him something or other. And finally, he turned to me and he said, "And young lady, and of course I thought he was great then. And young lady, what would you like to do?" And I said, what would you want or something? And I said, I'd like for you to be on the air with me such and such a day. And I'll never forget how I pulled himself up and said, young lady, listening to the radio is just like taking the lid off of a cesspool. Really? And so he I walked, really did say that. Uh, right? And so I walked away. Mm. And Dean Camp Hefner, who was the one that had put it together, mm. said, if you want him, his bark is worth, worth worse than his bite. And if mm. you want him, he'll be there. So he decided he'd come over whatever day it was. And when he walked in <laughs> into the little studio where we were, and it hadn't been used before, so it was dark, and I had to press the light, and, you know, it comes on instantly. And he said, why in the world did they put us in this dark place? So he was like that. He was very difficult, difficult to interview. Uh -huh. And I don't think there was a dry thread on my body when I got through. Boy, I tell you, that's... <laughs> yet, yet he was very pleasant. That, that, those are tough mm -hmm. interviews. They, they that, really are. That really, <clears throat> you know, that makes it, uh, you make you wonder whether you want to keep doing this kind of thing after you have somebody like that, let me tell you. I'll We're tell going you. to break here and be back in just a couple of minutes here. Harriet Presley, former WPTF personality, and a new one coming on WPTF on April 25th, of course, is uh, our friend Donna Mason. She's right here talking with Harriet and yours truly, Art Farkle. No, no, Lowell Shoemaker, that's right. <laughs> Let's do something right here at 11.35 our time. Say, do you sometimes experience leg cramps? Uh, if so, I'd like to tell you about a product that, uh, that can actually stop and prevent nighttime leg cramps. It's called Calcet. Uh, Calcet is made by the Mission Pharmacol Company. It's a well-known and respected company in the pharmaceutical field. Now, Calcet's unique triple calcium formulation is specifically blended to prevent leg cramps. Now, for any ladies getting ready to have a baby, Calcet is safe and really effective for the leg cramps experienced during pregnancy. Calcet is small. It's easy to swallow. Calcet will not cause stomach upset. Calcet is used by professional and amateur athletes worldwide and is available for your use. Now, if you suffer from leg cramps for any reason, try Calcet. It's available at Eckerd's and Car Drugs. Calcet. Scattered showers will increase through the day. There may be a passing thunderstorm. High will be in the mid-50s on strong east winds. Periods of rain tonight as temperatures drop to the low 40s. Wednesday could start off with a brief shower, then mixed clouds and sunshine with a high near 60. Wednesday night will be fair with a low of 40, mostly sunny Thursday mid-60s for the high, partly sunny on Friday, the high will be in the low 70s. With the WPTF four-day forecast, I'm meteorologist Chris Thompson. 45 degrees in the triangle. This weekend, WPTF Radio, the Cycle Center Asheboro, and the American All-Terrain Vehicle Association bring you the AATVA Grand National Championship races at Raleigh State Fairgrounds. This Saturday at 10 a.m., the amateurs make a dash to the finish line around the track, and later that evening at 7 p.m., see the pros go head-to-head. -head. Then this Sunday, it's more amateur ATV racing at 10 a.m. Don't miss it. Tickets available at the gate. $8 adults, $5 for children. Or or tune in to WPTF Sports Line for your chance to win AATVA Grand National tickets. This Saturday night is WPTF Radio Night. Join WPTF for this exciting pro race. 100 WPTF visors will be free to the first 100 spectators this Saturday night. If you've never seen an all-terrain vehicle race, come out and give it a whirl. If you have seen one, you know what all the excitement's about. The AATVA Grand Nationals at the State Fairgrounds this weekend. Be there. WPTF! My work began at WPTF ten years ago when I was selected to be a studio guide, showing our many visitors around the radio station. This position didn't last long for me because within a few months I was offered the position of transcription clerk, where I became familiar with the operation of the turntables, transcriptions, records, and general production. A few months later, I auditioned for announcing, and except for a two-year tour of duty in the Navy, I've been announcing ever since. Well, that's the voice of who? That's Worth White, wasn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. How did you, you, you know all this stuff? <laughs> well, you see, we you all worked, worked together people, for yeah. so long. Which of all the announcers at, at WPTF was your favorite? Mm, that's a hard one because mm -hmm. I liked all of them. I guess I knew Jim Reed the best. Mm -hmm. As I said, I knew him and his wife both. But B.J. was great. Yeah. They all were. Yeah, it's hard to make a choice. And yeah. they were all wonderful to me. We still have some great people here. I know. You know I know you do. I know you tune in and still mm -hmm. listen to PTF. Mm -hmm. Of course. Do you know this station's been on since 1924? That's hard to believe. 
That's amazing. Many, many years, yeah. That's one of the reasons I'm really excited yeah. about this. You know, it's such a history. It really is. And, and it's a tradition here. It's, it's, a, it's a good good station to work for. There are good people here. Well, back before it was WPTF, I had not been married long. And they, they was it the Wynn radio station? I Wynn, that's right. They, uh, br uh, they Wynn, broadcast. They ran a radio uh, specialty company, right. sold they, electronic um, stuff. They came out and did a, a broadcast into the chapel at, at Peace, mm -hmm. and we were over there. And I remember, at the, it was about 1922, and I remember writing my father that I had heard this, but I didn't think much of it because it sounded more like a circus tent than anything else. The static was so heavy, and so they hadn't bad. learned what yeah. to do with it. And I've often laughed. He died before I went on the air, and I've mm -hmm. often laughed at myself, yeah. wondered what he would, th would have thought of me if yeah. this, yeah, so really back in the old, the big old radios yeah, back. Right. You remember all those yeah, huge right. radios. Big, uh -huh, uh -huh. It even had the crystal sets, too. Yeah, right. You remember right. that kind of stuff? Mm, yeah. Uh -huh. Gee, you young lady. First you... one I ever knew, uh, knew about neighbors had, and they would yeah. invite us over to listen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, the crystal uh -huh. set, huh? Uh -huh. I remember them. You, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Donna, I used to make a them. A few of them. Yeah, <laughs> a few of them. Hey, you're on the air. Hello there, Bill. Yes, uh, Harriet, is speaking of Mrs. Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, and uh, so forth, you mentioned that she was going to Australia. Uh, well, when I came back from Australia and the Dutch East Indies, which is now Indonesia, of course, uh, I was with Dr. Frank Porter Graham. Uh, I'm sure you remember oh, Dr. Yeah. Frank mm -hmm. quite well. Mm -hmm. What a man. Mm -hmm. Frank Porter Graham, yes. He was a great person. He was president of the university for a long time, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And he really was a great person and traveled around and did many, many good things. I He's remember prior him well. to Bill Friday, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Bill, mm -hmm. of course, took over when Frank uh, Yes, a... well, actually, uh, Gordon Gray, the former Gordon, Secretary right. of the Army, was uh, in between yeah. uh, Dr. Frank Porter Graham and Bill Friday. Mm -hmm. but, oh, that's right. Uh, but Dr. Fi uh, Dr. Frank Graham, you know, was one of three good uh, United Nations good officers who set up uh, the country of, of what is now Indonesia, or was formerly the Dutch, Dutch East Indies. But in, in, in any case, uh, I, I think that Dr. Frank Porter Graham, without a doubt, is one of the greatest sons that this uh, country, uh, a state and country ever produced. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, quite controversial, but, but be that as it may, a, a tremendous a educator, of course. And speaking of Mrs. Roosevelt, uh, after I was with Dr. Frank uh, down in Indonesia, uh, Mrs. Roosevelt invited several of us to Hyde Park. And I remember one of the things that she said was, uh, one of the ways to help you stay young was to keep up your curiosity. <laughs> and that's, what's, that's what Harriet has done all these years. Yes, of course. And the other thing she said was that variety is the spice of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course. But anyway, you also maybe, Harriet, remember uh, Everett Case quite well. Oh, indeed. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Who really put basketball on the map? For yes, us. yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and, and this new man called uh, Jim uh, Valvoline is quite a contrast to El. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Valvoline. <laughs> oh, he <laughs> loved that. Oh yes, he's known as Jim Valvoline. They do. All good people. Uh huh. Bad people are something else. Yeah. But in any case, it's nice to talk to you. May I ask you whatever happened to Mrs. Cabinet that used to model with you? As far as I know, uh, she she is not modeling anymore. But she they live out in. Oh, I've forgotten what part of town, but she and Roy are still going strong. She was modeling out at the Crabtree store until just about a year ago, I think. I see. I haven't seen her in some time. Yes. But those well, were great days. Yes. <laughs> well, well many, many of us remember both of you very fondly. Well, thank you so Bill, very much. Bill, you apparently were with the university system, am I right? Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm a, a businessman and, and, and an old war man. All right. <laughs> well, gee. We, we do appreciate it. We're going to do right now. We're going to make a break here. We'll be back. Let's make a break. Push the wrong button there for a minute. Cut myself off on WPTF again. Harriet Presley, a former WPTF radio talk show personality. And we've got one that's coming on the air who everybody will hear about. Of course, Donna Mason here very shortly. And she'll have the Donna Mason Show starting April 25th from 10 to 11 right here on WPTF. Be right back. The Kimball's house sold before I could even get the sign in the yard, and the buyer wanted a 30-day closing, which meant we had to shift into high gear to find another house. So the three of us set out on a mission. We looked in my listing book. How about this tutor? Called the listing agent from my car phone. We agreed on a ranch. Called another listing agent. I love it. And another. I hate it. And another. But 29 houses later. Okay. Okay. I had a contract in my hand. 
It was the most calls I'd ever made on my United Telespectrum cellular phone, and it was worth it. Piece of cake. Because I not only got my commission, but now the Kimballs are calling me with referrals. Now buy a GE 1000 cellular phone from United Telespectrum and get a second phone at half price. Plus, sign up for a one-year service commitment and get the preferred customer package with up to 200 free minutes airtime, free installation, and much more. Call United Telespectrum at 1-800-556-2343 for details. Call now, 1-800-556-2343, or see these phones at Telephone Junction in Durham. Certain conditions and limitations apply. Phones reconditioned with one-year warranty. Hello, this is Mario Dell, and I want to tell you about the most important business appointment you can make. Mark April 21st on your calendar for the Small Business Expo 88, sponsored by the Greater Raleigh Chamber of Commerce. Over 200 different companies will display their new products and services, all under one roof. Discover new sources and resources for your company, all at no charge. Plan for a day of exciting business connections, from computers and security systems to leasing and networking. The Small Business Expo 88 has it all. Even local restaurants will be represented with samples of their specialties. You can register for great door prizes, too, including three nights at the Bahamas Princess Resort and Casino, featuring nonstop air via Braniff Airlines from Raleigh-Durham, brought to you by Princess Casino Vacations. Small Business Expo 88 is one business appointment you can't afford to miss. Raleigh Civic Center, Thursday, April 21st, 9.30 to 7. Small Business Expo 88, admission free. WPTF! Besides regular staff work here at WPTF, my principal job is news. During the course of each day, I handle five news shows, two SO reporter broadcasts at 7.55 a.m. and 12 noon, a 15-minute summary at 2 p.m., and a five-minute review of Raleigh happenings at 6.15 each evening. That was whose voice? Who was that, Harriet? I'm trying to think. I believe it must be Sam Beard. You got it. Uh -huh. Sam Beard, and uh, he was the predecessor, I think Tom told me, to Her uh, Charlie Gaddy. And he was here for many years. Did was he on uh, television, too? I, I don't know. Channel 5. Okay, we put a free okay. plug in there for him. You know, all these people that you have met, and they have come through the door, and, and people that have died all these years... Uh, what are some of the things you'd like to tell people like Donna Mason now? And we'll get to our phones here very shortly. And now that she's coming out with a new women's talk show, what are some of the things that maybe some of the wisdom that you've had over the years to help her? Any little th anything there that might be of interest? There's something there that might give her some inspiration or whatever. I'll take anything I can. Any, get yes, that, that got it. Somebody asked me one day what made my show successful. And I don't know whether you know Warf, uh, Bar Warren Barfield or not. I, I know Warren. <clears throat> sure but he do. said, I'll tell you. He said, a nose for news and an educated woman's curiosity. Mm -hmm. so, Very good. <laughs> two great ingredients here. A nose for news. Yes. And an educated okay. woman's curiosity. Makes sense. Donna, you're going to do it. Words to live by. <laughs> you're going to do it. All right. Let's get to Martin here. Hi, Martin. Good for you. Well, She's driving down the road, pulled off, and there you go. Well, what an opportunity to interview Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh, I'm a great fan of, of Wright. Mm -hmm. And um, many books on Wright. And right. He is a perfectionist part none, uh, unequal architect. And, and the fact, I, I just, I would imagine he would be difficult. A lot of great people are difficult. True. I, I, Winston Churchill said, um, he was known to be a very difficult man to get along with on a personal level. Uh, he was quite pompous and quite assured of his own abilities and, and not assured of anybody else's. Mm -hmm. And he got into a fight, an actual fist fight, fisticuffs, with one of his manservants one time. And the servant asked him afterwards, why are you always so mean to people who wait on you and work for you? And Winston Churchill said, well, why did you question me when I told you to do something? He again asked him, well, why are you always so mean? And he said, because I'm a great man. Mm -hmm. And he felt like he was a great man, and yeah. I think Frank Lloyd Wright must have thought that, yes, he was unprecedented. <laughs> well, I, I'm <laughs> sure that it... Work, and he said, yeah. do you think your work is good? He says, I know it. Uh -huh. I know it. It's a, a super ego, I guess. Huh? I think yeah. a lot of very creative people are very difficult to work with because they're so into their particular field that they kind of close out the others. I wouldn't be surprised. <clears throat> <laughs> Any way we can get a transcript of the dry interview, 
Uh, I don't know if we have that on tape. We could check through our archives with the Frank Lloyd Wright interview with I'm uh, sure we Harriet. didn't have. I don't know if I, we did or not. Enough. We do have an interview. If you tune in, we're going to have an interview here coming up with uh, Marian Anderson, I believe. We'll hear that, uh, Martin. So thanks so much for calling and pulling off the road there and getting on the phone, huh? Okay, and Mary, could you tell me what year you interviewed Wright? Do you recall what year it was when you interviewed Frank Lloyd Wright? Just to put it in perspective to his work. Approximately? No, I would say in the early 50s, but I don't really remember. Mm -hmm. uh, early 50s? I believe so. Mm -hmm. uh, was that before the Guggenheim? Before the Guggenheim? Not sure. I'm, uh, I'm not real sure about that. Okay. Okay? Uh, that, that, thank you very much. Thanks so much, Martin. Yeah. He has designed, of course, Frank Lloyd Wright designed buildings all over oh, the yes. world. Oh, and yes. One in particular, I know in Lakeland, Florida, is the, the uh, college here mm -hmm. that he had just designed. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. He was uh -huh. so far ahead of his he time. He was. Incredible, incredible man. Uh, he was an incredible man. He was an interesting man, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> he was one of the most difficult people I've ever talked to. Very, very And hard. I met... Um, um, One eight hundred six six two seven nine seven nine. Now here's Lowell Shoemaker. I'm director of women's affairs and public service at WPTF. For nine years, I've been on the air each afternoon, Monday through Friday, at two thirty, with a program primarily for women. In that time, I've come to know a number of our listeners personally, and have been invited to attend many of their meetings talking with them on some subject that is of importance to organized women's groups. Just this week, for instance, I've been to Livington to talk to the Southeastern District of Negro Home Demonstration Club. Well, that is a famous voice here, and in fact, uh, I'm just excited because today we have with us here in touch, Harriet Presley is here. Harriet was a former WPTF radio talk show personality. She was women's editor. And the program, let's see, Harry, my headphones are cutting out, so I'll take those off and say welcome to our show here this morning. Uh, let's see, you're on from 1940 to 1960. 1943 to 1943. 19, uh, 17 years. 17 years mm -hmm. at, this, at this station. In fact, we were located downtown at that time. Right. Way back then, huh? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, this, this station is so beautiful. Uh, there was a jump from the, the station in the insurance building and then across the street and I never knew much about the one across across the street right but then from the station and the insurance building to this it certainly yeah, is a job. our new facility beautiful mm -hmm. yeah and also joining us I want to introduce somebody I'm excited about because I think that uh, you're going to hear a lot about her here on WPTF Donna Mason is with us today now Donna will be premiering her show the Donna Mason show Tricky name, isn't hey, it? Hey, I mean, I'm they say excited. it makes sense to me, Donna. <laughs> Donna will be premiering on April the uh, 25th. 25th, right, and from 10 to 11. Uh, 10 to 11 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning right here on this station by Kelly. Donna, you're, you're terrific. Uh, Thank you. Uh, a very tall Donna. Well, we're about the same height, aren't we, yeah, Lowell? Well, I'm 6'1", 6'2". Six 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 yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's good to have you. And, and the fact is, that now here we have Harriet, who was on from 1943 to 1960, right. and we've got Donna Mason, who will be premiering her new show, uh, here in a less than what about a couple weeks? Couple weeks, yeah. shortly after the Southern Women's Show. That's right. So You're we'll going to be, be doing with that? us on the Southern Women's That's Show. That's right. So. I love it. It's my favorite. Yeah. So it's great to have both of you. And Donna, just interject whatever you know. Okay. Your show, just basically, Donna will be doing a lot of women's type. Uh, yeah, features, we'll be talking about. Um, yeah, and I'm not going to infringe on Maury's territory. We're going mm -hmm. to be doing things. We want input from everybody. Uh, what's it like to work for a female boss? You know, with so many mm -hmm. women are coming up. Continuing education for women. Maybe talking about fatal attraction and things like mm -hmm. that that are affecting women. Working women, and even though you're not working out of the house, you're still working. Oh, so we'll be, be talking great. about all kinds of things. So see, our times are going to change. You're going to hear the In Touch show from 11 to 12, mm -hmm. and Donna Mason will be on from 10 to 11, and Maury with his show will be on from 9 to 10. They're going to sandwich me in between yeah. you guys. Yeah, hey, you're going to be terrific. <laughs> you're going to be it. terrific. I love now, it. Now, Harry, let's get back and talk. And Donna, just join in and I'll interject in. whatever you got to talk about here. Uh, I heard you when you were on with J.C. Knowles here a couple oh, months you? back when he was down on the, the mall downtown. That was a lot of fun. Cold <laughs> winter. I mean, it was right in January, I think, sometime. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, I said, gee, this woman is amazing. How old are you, really? Are you in your 70s, or what are you? Oh, aren't you flattering? No, I'm 92, and I'm proud to say that I'm 92. I'm not a bit uh, sensitive about it. 
and I'm proud to say that, that I've been in good health all these years, and, you know, that's something to be grateful for. You look terrific. 92 <laughs> years you. young, I guess, is the word. <laughs> You're great. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm interested in, in how you got involved in radio and where it all began. You told me, I thought you were born in Raleigh, but I found out that you, you were not born here in this area. No, I was born in Houston, Texas, mm -hmm. and then we moved to West Virginia, Charleston, West Virginia, which was my father's home, when I was about five mm -hmm. and lived there until I was in high school, and then we went to Baltimore to live. He was with the Baltimore Sun, and we lived there, uh, I lived there through high school and college, and then worked a year at a commercial laboratory. I, was, I took my degree in analytical chemistry and worked in a commercial laboratory there for a little bit more than a year, uh, but... It's hard for you two young people to believe that back <laughs> like in, that. in oh. that day and time, women didn't. Uh -huh. And it didn't what? Well, didn't work in commercial laboratories. Mm -hmm. They were teachers or, or stenographers, as they called them back in those days, or they were nurses. But no, no, not in one of these places where they were just men. Mm -hmm. So my folks weren't very happy about my working at that particular place. And my mother really got the job for me at Peace College. She saw a teacher's, ad, uh, a teacher's agency ad advertising for a, a woman to teach, in a southern co teach science in a southern college. And so by the time I got home that afternoon, she practically <laughs> had the job in hand, although I had to go for an interview that weekend. And I decided I would try it. It would make my folks happier, and I would try it, and I've never been sorry. I came here in the fall of 1919, and Bill Presley came in the, f in the spring of 1920, and that was a happy time for me. We were married in 1921 and have and had 63 happy years together. So you years. see, Mother didn't make the wrong choice. No. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, she did very well by you. And you've seen a lot of changes. I think that's what's so amazing. Oh, indeed. In you mean in Raleigh? In Raleigh oh, and indeed. just in the way women have been treated. Oh, now indeed. you could work in that laboratory right, you're talking right. about. And loads of girls do and, and find it very interesting and, and give a great deal of of uh, real knowledge and, and successful uh, achievement to, uh, to laboratories of that kind. And chemistry runs in the family, doesn't it? It runs mm -hmm. in the family. My daughter, who is Harriet Tucker, lives in Greensboro, got her master's at State College in chemistry, and my granddaughter, who lives in, uh, in, in Chapel Hill now, but whose home is in Norfolk, got her Ph.D. in chemistry, Oh, a couple, of, I guess a year ago now. So it runs in the family. The genes, I guess. I don't know why. Because <laughs> yeah. all I remember is that NaCl is salt and H2O is water, and you can't get very far on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, you know, I wanna, we're going to take a break here, and, and I would like to know how you actually got involved in radio and how your right. career mm -hmm. started mm -hmm. with WPTF mm -hmm. way back in the early 40s here. Again, if you're just tuning in, Harriet Presley, she is a former WPTF radio talk show personality. She ran the, uh, what, women's editor, they called you back then, right? Ran the show from 1943 to 1960 here on this station. Worked for people like uh, Pappy Graham Pointer, and we can mention Bill Jackson, Dick Mason, just a few of the names that you're going to hear here. In fact, coming up as we come back after our break here, Susie Sharp, you'll hear that too here on In Touch, and also Donna Mason. You'll be hearing the Donna Mason uh, talk show. That'll be starting coming up April 25th here on WPTF from 10 to 11 o'clock. And Donna, we're going to have some fun this morning. No question about good, it. Good. We'll open I'm the phones up very shortly. Let's take a break. We'll be back. The North Carolina Theater proudly presents a Broadway classic, The Music Man. Please, folks, may I have your attention, please? I'm Professor Harold Hill, and I'm here to organize the River City Boys Band. 1988 season continues Wednesday through Sunday nights in Raleigh's Memorial Auditorium with The Music Man, filled with heart-lifting marches, haunting barbershop quartets, tuneful ballads, and light-hearted musical jokes. Yeah, no kiss on the very first date is usually a hussy. Rubble, oh, right, right here in River City. Where the capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. Don't let the parade pass you by. Order your tickets today for The Music Man. Opening Wednesday for six performances at Memorial Auditorium. A production of the North Carolina Theater. Call 755-6060 and order your tickets today. All rise. We're here to judge value. Representing Dodge, Aries America, and Omni America. Representing Ford, Tempo, and Escort GL four doors. I'm ready for opening remarks. Dodge, when it comes to value, Your Honor, the Dodge position is clear. Aries America at $69.95 has over 30 standard features, and it's hundreds less than the comparably equipped Tempo. 
Plus, it offers option package savings of 300 bucks. Omni America has over 40 standard features, a comparably equipped sticker hundreds less than the Escort, impressive package savings, and a base sticker of just $59.95. Furthermore, I stress our 770 protection plan, a warranty Ford can't match. Ford, your statement? Uh, we object. Since Ford isn't prepared to respond, I rule it's gotta be a Dodge. Package savings based on sticker prices of package items purchased separately. See 770 limited warranty and restrictions at dealer. Base sticker prices exclude tax and destination charges. Court dismissed. WPTF! This is Jim Reed. My work with WPTF is concerned mostly with sports and with news broadcasts. This is my 12th year with the station. I came here from Greenville, South Carolina, where I was program director of a 5,000-watt NBC affiliate for three years. There you go, Jim Reed. Did you know Jim? Indeed, I did know Jim. Yeah. I had the pleasure of introducing Jim to his wife, Elizabeth, and... Uh, that was it. And Elizabeth worked at the station, too. And then when they became engaged, she had to stop. And she is Elizabeth Elizabeth Reed. Oh, I can't remember her, her new married name. Murray. 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 Yes, yeah, see, Tom, our uh, historian here, uh, was telling uh, me all this uh, on the headphones. Oh, fine. And uh, I've kept more or less in touch with her. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen or heard from her in some little time. But we were great friends. And and I always thought it was a lucky break when she was employed at PTA. Uh, yeah. That voice again, Harriet Presley, and, and we're going to open our phones up here momentarily. If you'd like to get in on the action here, I'd say, we have Harriet Presley, former radio talk show personality, right on this station. When was your... Now, let's get into the, 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 uh, the, fa the aspect of when you became involved in radio and how this all came about. And I know you have a family. We didn't even talk about your kids or anything like that. Well, they, they were all in school before I could, quote, go to work. And... Uh, so uh, that was not any special difficulty because I could get home in a hurry if I needed to. But anyway, I had done some programs occasionally for old PTA or Girl Scouts or some of those, just public service on the station. And then when the war came and many of the boys were being called into service, they issued a call for people to come and try out. They had a school, so-called. And I, a friend called me and asked me why I didn't come. And so I wrote a note and asked if I could come. And I, had, I don't see how I'd had time to get to the assistant program director's desk before I had a, a letter from him saying, you will have to come down and see me. We have so much trouble with older women. Well, that was in 1943, and I'm not quite, wasn't quite as old as I am now. No. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, I went down, and he said I could, if I promised to be good, I could go to the school. Yeah. And it ended that way. They were in search of a, somebody to do a woman's show, and I was lucky to get it. You were the person. Uh-huh. How many years? 17? 17. Uh -huh. First, it was one day a week on Friday. Then it was two days a week, Friday and Monday, which is difficult. Then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, mm -hmm. all for free. And then finally, I hit the jackpot and got it five days a week for a paycheck. And they paid you <laughs> yeah. something. It was about time. <laughs> oh, that, that is funny. just terrific. But I loved every minute of it. Yeah. Donna, any questions you'd like to? No. We were talking on the way over in the car. I, I went to get Harriet. And I I don't know if this is too personal, Harriet, but do you want <laughs> us to tell, tell us how much that first paycheck was? Mm. $25. $25. Uh, <laughs> $25. That's uh -huh. going back some. <laughs> that, was, that was big bucks back Big then. bucks back there, yes, yeah. indeed. Isn't that something? <laughs> but I made a little bit more than that before I stopped after 17 years. <laughs> mm -hmm. isn't, isn't that something? Again, Harriet Presley with us, and Donna is here, Donna Mason, who will have the, a new show here on PTF, we'll mention again, starting April 25th, right here on this station, from 10 to 11 in the morning. She's going to have right. all kinds of women's features and Just before you. programs. Yeah, boy. Yeah, I'm looking forward to I'll that. I'll have a tough act to follow, huh? <laughs> let's hope. Yay. Let's just hope. You're going to be all right, yeah. Uh, incidentally, let's mention phones. If you remember uh, Harriet Presley, and many of you, I'm sure, that are listening, Remembered her programs for many years on WPTF. Our phones are open now for you to get in on the conversation now. 860-9783. Very simply, get on the phone now. 1-800-662-7979. Our toll-free statewide number locally, 860-9783. 1-800-662-7979. When we come back, we're going to take a little break right now, and we're going to hear something from a lady that you knew well, Susie Sharp, and we'll talk about her here in touch. Scattered showers will overspread the region through the day along with a thunderstorm or two. And on gusty east winds, the high...
always came back with good stories to yeah. tell. What was uh, what was Graham Pointer like to work for? Now he was uh, he, Pappy. He was Pappy Pointer. Mm-hmm. Was he was he difficult? Did he correct your pronunciation and things like that? He was not difficult to work for. He was he was strict in this way. Mm-hmm. He wanted pronunciations to be exactly right, mm-hmm. and he didn't hesitate to call you in and say you pronounced that word so and so, not the way you did it. And so you said thank you, sir. I won't make that mistake again. But also he was he was uh, quick to praise you if he heard uh, heard something that he thought was particularly good that afternoon he would he would immediately say that was mm-hmm. great and why can't you do so and so and I remember one time for the uh, the um, Institute of religion which the one of the churches held here every every sp- every winter I guess January through March and uh, I had a difficult time in writing the introduction for one of the men whom I was to have and the next day he said, why can't you write an introduction like that for everybody? And I said, well, because everybody isn't Ryan Hole Neighbor. Mm-hmm. And I worked the whole day to get the right to get the right introduction. But he was quick to realize that you had done something unusual, in his opinion, unusually good, and why didn't you live mm-hmm. up to it? Mm-hmm. But as far as I was concerned, he was delightful to work for. Harry, what was it like to, to interview back in the 40s? Uh, what kind of people did you interview? What were some of your, your guests uh, in the whole thing? I got interested in people when I was a very small girl because my father was with the Baltimore Sun, and he made up his mind that I would see or meet every prominent woman actress who came to town if it were possible. And so he took me to see and hear prominent women. I think I got interested in people that way. And uh, when I went to WPTF, this is my chance to interview interesting people. Mrs. Roosevelt was one, and I think that was the most exciting one I ever did because we took the uh, engineer out to, to Mr. Daniel's house and took the photographer and all that, and she was lovely to do. Many, many people were interesting but difficult. She wasn't difficult. Ron Hole uh, Niebuhr, I mentioned. But uh, Dr. Ralph Bunch was one that I enjoyed particularly, and he was with the United oh, Nations. Oh, yes, sure. And um, I was asking him about his children. He had several, and one small boy, seven, I believe, and mm-hmm. he said, you know, it takes more out of me to manage his affairs and it does United Nations. <laughs> so uh-huh. he had a grand sense of humor. Yeah. Eddie Albert oh, sure. was one of the most delightful people that yeah. I ever met. And he came in, he was in a show here, a play here, and whoever was managing called and asked if we would interview him, and of course I loved it. And he was delightful, folksy, friendly, and you felt as though you'd known him all your life. Marian Anderson was another great, and I just, just loved being with her. What a wonderful singer. She was a wonderful, wonderful mm-hmm. woman. Mm-hmm. She really was. Of course, back then, uh, there was a problem, uh, you know, with the races back then, and I'm sure that caused some consternation. Well, or problems there for... was, but, you know, when you went to see Marian Anderson, you she was such a delightful lady and told so many delightful stories that you forgot what color she was. She was just a delightful person. And the engineer and photographer who went with me to interview her the time that I did do a, a actually on the air interview said, um, the, the photographer said when, when um, she went to develop the film, said, uh, these are not right. She brought me two. She said, you know, she was such a delightful person that I can't real, don't realize what color she was. It's just too dark or too light mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the engineer who was along said to her, well, Miss Anderson, I so, certainly hope I'll be on the board when this is played because I'd love to ride gain on your show. Isn't so she made a wonderful impression. Yeah. And you're, you're right. It was a difficult mm-hmm. time for Sure. Before, uh, I would assume that that created some problems for you, uh, to uh, having it that oh, many well, years not ago. really. Not Only really. one person spoke to me on the street and was right. surprised that I had yeah. had, had her on. But uh-huh. as I told her that, you know, she was just a delightful, lovely person who just happened mm-hmm. to be black, and there wasn't any th- any argument sure. about are, that. Are, haven't we come a long way since? Indeed, then? we have. Oh boy, Indeed am I glad. Have. You know, you were really into, sort of into women's rights, even way back. <laughs> am, I, am I right now? Because your show was called We the Women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So really, that in a way was that kind of a, a show back in the early 40s. Well, maybe so, maybe mm-hmm. so. And I don't know who picked it. I believe I believe Virginia Tatum, who was the program director, assistant program director, picked it. And I don't know why, but we did mm-hmm. it that way, and we tried to incorporate it in in the show every so often. We have a tape here, I think, of Susie Sharp, right? Now, Susie, if not mistaken, was the first woman, a woman on the bench here in North Carolina, right, in the court system, and, and then became the chief justice of the North Carolina Supreme Court. Can we hear that tape, Tom? Let's hear that, and we'll be back. It's especially appropriate today that we have as our guest a woman who represents the ideals that we hold dear, that of justice for all mankind. 
She's Judge Susie Sharp of Louisville, North Carolina, the first woman ever to be appointed to the bench of our state. Judge Sharp was sworn in last Friday morning. I'm very glad indeed to have this opportunity to congratulate her and to have a bit of a talk with her. And Judge Sharp, we do appreciate your coming in and chatting with us. Of course, we're all familiar with the vital statistics about you. They've been in the paper several times, but let's just talk a little bit about that before we go on to something further. You are a native of Reedsville, I believe. Yes, I have lived in Reedsville most of my life, but I was born in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. And that means that Nash and Edgecombe are just as proud of you as Rockingham County is. And uh, you were educated in Reedsville? I went to school in Reedsville, high school and grammar grade. When I went to college, I went to Woman's College at Greensboro for two years. Then I transferred to the University of Chapel Hill, which I graduated in 1929. And you've practiced law at home ever since? Yes, all the law practice which I have ever done was done with my father, J.M. Sharp, in Reedsville. I believe I read somewhere that you and your father formed... Boy, I want to tell you something. You had so many interesting interviews in that 17 years. And there again, that was a, a lady named Susie Sharp, who was the first woman on the bench here in North Carolina. Yeah, then the first, the first chief justice. Mm -hmm. And she's, she still lives here. She has an apartment over in Cameron Village, I believe. And uh, I see her every so often. She um, gets around, she still drives, and I say still drives, she drives and does more or less what she wants to, I think. She was in a right bad automobile accident a couple of years ago, a car knocked her down. I think I read about uh -huh. that. And she had difficulty getting together after that, but now she's fine. You too were hurt here a while back. Yeah, just about the same time that she was, but we didn't make headline news, mm -hmm. she did. <laughs> but mine left me somewhat, somewhat um, lame, but I'm all right. I, other than that, I have to hang on when I go up and down steps yeah. or on on uneven ground. Let me tell you something. For a 92-year-old woman, that you cannot, I cannot believe it. You have a mind as sharp as a tack. You can hear well. This woman is just amazing, Donna. I know. She's going to show us up. I, sure. I'm afraid so, you know. Let me tell you, when, the truth. whenever I begin to get puffed up after something like that, I think of something <laughs> that happened to me at the fair. And we used, I used to cover the fair every year, uh -huh. Monday through Friday. And we had a studio out there, and there were pictures on the wall of all of the men who were here, boys, I call them, and that was before television, so we had pictures of the soap operas uh, cast around. And late one afternoon, when I was so tired and so dirty and longing for my replacement to come, this farmer came in. I had seen him across the, the aisle. He had a, an exhibit over there, but I didn't know his name. He came in, and he looked all around all the pictures and wanted to know who they were, and I gave him the lowdown on all of them. And then he got away, started out the door, and he came back. He looked around again. He said, there's another person out here at WPTF, but I don't see a picture. It's that woman, Harriet Presley. And I said, well, I'm Harriet Presley, and I shall never forget the way he stood back and looked me over from head to foot. And then he said, lousy, honey, you ain't nothing but a common woman. <laughs> Yeah. What an Some story, I'm telling you. We're going to be back here talking with Harriet Presley, a very well-known former WPTF radio personality. And, of course, Donna, Donna Mason with us. Donna, with her new show coming up here on April 25th here on WPTF. And we're going to be back. Yay, Donna. We'll take a break. Be back right after this. of something exciting. The third annual Southern Women's Show. You'll sample free food in the Foodland Pavilion, have a cosmetic makeover, enjoy spectacular fashion shows, meet celebrity chefs, be part of a game show, talk with health and fitness experts, and take in the Be Your Best Eckerd Pavilion. Then register to win a 1988 Ford Festiva and fabulous trips. Don't miss your chance to shop for art, crafts, and gifts for you and your entire family. The Southern Women's Show, April 14th through 17th, to the North Carolina State Fairgrounds, sponsored by WPTF TV 28 and the News and Observer Raleigh Times. Food, fashion, and fun. Something special for everyone. At the Southern Women's Show. At the Southern Women's Show. Discount coupons available at Hardee's and Food Line. Who says you have to be rich to own your home? 
If you make over $21,000 a year, you're rich enough to afford a home in the Richlands. For the price of rent, you can have the pride of home ownership. Both Richland Run and Richland Towns offer you a lot more than any landlord, like exciting, well-designed floor plans, decks overlooking tree-lined hills, plus swimming and tennis facilities. And with today's tax laws, you're buying into one of the most significant tax deductions left. So you don't have to be rich to own your own home, just smart. And the smart money in the triangle is on the Richlands. The location is great. Near Raleigh-Durham Airport, the Research Triangle, Rex Hospital, major shopping areas, and fine schools. The Richlands. From Crabtree takes 70 West, then go two miles down Durley Road. The Richlands. Priced from 59.9. Closing costs are paid, and special financing is available now. The Richlands. Dial 787-9706. Equal housing community. WPTF. Well, it's a nice morning. It's a Harriet Presley. Harriet Presley morning here at WPTF. And, of course, for many years, from 1943 to 1960, Harriet had her afternoon show from 1.30 till 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And you did a little bit in the evening at one time. Yes, I did. I fed into the evening programs, just depending on who was here and whether it fitted into the regular mm -hmm. format. Started out as an analy analytical chemist. <laughs> Ended up in broadcasting. And Harriet Presley, at 92 years young, well, you is said, still up amazing. In broadcasting. Yeah. After broadcasting, you'll laugh if I tell you what I did. I want to hear about the after the All break. Right. Please right. tell us, okay? <laughs> Harriet Presley and, of course, Donna Mason with us here in touch. We're going to break. Be back with your phone calls here on WPTM. Stay with us. WPTF, AM Stereo 680, Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill. I'm Allison Taylor, WPTF News. Some of the stories we're covering. The body of a missing Wilson area woman has been found. The Columbus County Sheriff will ask for a leave of absence. And high level... Bain is a dentist, but has spent most of his time and energy in the textile business. One of his main interests has been... Now, we're trying to figure out who that voice is or was. Harriet Presley is here, former WPTF radio talk show personality for many years from 1943 to 1960. She was a women's editor at the station. The program was We the Women, and Harriet is here with Donna Mason. Donna will be having her new show coming up here uh, April 25th, premiering on WPTF. <laughs> Ken, <laughs> <11 o 'clock. laughs> Donna Mason, we're, we're looking forward to that, okay. Harriet, did, did you know who that person was who was talking? I figure that out. We're trying to figure that out. Do you got to tell us, Tom? No? It could have been Mr. Debnam. Debnam. That was, was it could have been Debnam. That was Debnam. Debnam. Now, he had views of the news, I believe, is the name Debnam, of the show. Debnam views the yeah, news. how about right. that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Gee, you know, over all these years now, 1943 to 1960, and the question I asked before the break, what happened after WPTF? What did you do? Well, for four years, I did just a lot of community service. Remember that my husband was president of Peace College, and I had five children, and I had things to do. And, of course, I guess the, first, so. the first thing was to support him in, in any way that I could. And then uh, they called me one day from Hudson Belk, and uh, Marilyn, isn't that terrible? I can't remember her name, called me and said, um, we are opening, we're going to have modeling in our new, t in our new lunch room and we want an older, larger woman to model. And so uh, I thought she was asking me to give suggestions. And I'd been off the air for four years and kind of lost touch with who was doing what. But I said, now, let me think. And I mentioned a name or, or another name. And she said, no, you didn't understand me. We want you. Well, then I nearly had a heart attack. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise it was. Uh -huh. But I went, and uh, they accepted me, and I worked there twice a week for 14 years. It was fun. and. Uh, Hopefully it did some good. <laughs> yeah, you know, Harriet, I don't think you're the type to retire, really, because your mind is, is just as sharp as a tack. How do you keep, you know, do you read a lot? Do you, what yes, are the things that you I do? I read now? a lot, and I, I sew a lot. Mm -hmm. I have a, uh, several grandchildren who have babies, and so I've made some, some uh, quilts for them, and I'm working on one now. Not quilted quilt, but dry it already quilted, and then, uh, then embroider it. And one of my hobbies is making baby blankets for the young women in our church. I got interested in them because I was put in their circle as a Bible moderator a number of years ago, and then, then stayed in there after that 
after I gave that up, just because it, it was convenient for me. And I've kept in touch with many of them, and so that's the way I, sure. I like to do. You know, and and I read a lot. You've, you've done so much, which I think is fascinating, just because you were basically a woman of the 80s back then. You were doing things that women now are trying to do. You had the family, you, had, you were supporting your husband uh, in his job, and you were working, and you were balancing them all and doing them all. You obviously achieved a good balance. Well, I hope that I did, and I, I've always enjoyed everything that, that I did. <laughs> when you say a woman, <coughs> excuse me, of the 80s, before the 80s, remind me of a granddaughter. She wrote me from, from um, Ecuador the other day and said, Grandmother, I've always thought of you as a feminist. You don't like that word, but I've always thought of you as being that. Exactly. Really exactly. Uh, exactly. You really, myself. you kind of paved the road, uh, I think, for a lot uh, of women around here. Yeah, we've got Lizzie on the line. Let's mess our phones. Come on, get in on the telephone. Okay, 860-9783 here locally. And 1-800-662-7979. Are, we're listening to WPTF. You and I are listening. Harriet is listening. We're doing it right here. So if you want to get in on the program, now's your chance. 860-9783. 1-800-662-797. Again with us, Harriet Presley, and we have Donna Mason with us. Donna with her new show coming up here on the station on April 25th. Hey, Lizzie, you there? Uh, it's so nice to hear Miss Presley's voice again. I listened to her uh, years ago and always enjoyed her tremendously. I have a large manila envelope that I keep things in that I treasure. And I was reading the other day, looking through it, and I found a letter from Harriet Press. So you know how much it meant to me to put it in the things that I treasure. She had um, 